I'm Bo River with another segment of Different Drummers Online. Today we're going to put Reverend Phil Blackwell, pastor of First United Methodist Church, Chicago Temple, on the hot seat. Here to ask him all of those tough God questions you've always wanted to ask your pastor is Martin Kim, a member of the Roselle United Methodist Church and a student at Northwestern University. Welcome. So here's your, your big opportunity to ask Reverend Phil Blackwell all those tough questions we've always wanted to hear. We have all these denominations, all these Christian denominations. And there's also the sep separation between Protestants and Catholics. And you know, to someone, uh, to someone who asked me, you know, what's the difference or why do we have these kind of denominations, especially since Paul once wrote that we are all, you know, brothers mm -hmm. in Christ, Th they might ask, why all these denominations? What's the point? Mm -hmm. the, uh, the answer is basically an historical one rather than a theological one in that uh, when someone joins our United Methodist Church, I tell them there's no special salvation in being a Methodist over being a Lutheran, a Presbyterian, <coughs> a Roman Catholic, or Episcopalian. Uh, that there is a common gospel, there's a common sense of what the mission of the church is. When you go back though and look at the history of the church with uh, first the division east and west between Rome and Constantinople, and then you look at the uh, break of the Anglican church because Henry VIII wanted to get married again and again, and then the Protestant Reformation, you begin to see that, that the Christian faith begins to take on the profile of the various ethnic groups and language groups and all. And it's peculiarly uh, exaggerated in the United States because we're a land of immigrants, so everybody brings their, their religion and their language and their way of doing it. So on the one hand, it's a richness and uh, a very, uh, in some ways, a very positive thing, but the truth is that it, it actually hurts us more than helps us to be so divided. And uh, since the world really is divided between sort of those with a kind of religious sensibility and those who don't have it, those of us who do have a religious sensibility and want to talk about it, when we talk about it with, in the voice of 400 or 500 different denominations, it seems to get muted. Hmm. Another question I have kind of leading off of that is, a lot of people I know personally are kind of intrigued by faith, mm -hmm. by uh, who want to become theists or want to become a sort of Christian, but they're confused. They don't know the difference and then there are also people who are not interested, mm -hmm. who have no interest at all. So how do we talk to these two groups of people as Christians, mm -hmm. as people who are commanded to spread the good news? I think one of the, the, the common point is, I think everybody wants to make meaning out of their lives. They want to make sense out of things. You know, what does, what's this all about? What does this mean? Why am I in university and such and such a program? Why? Do I have this uh, affection or disconnection from various people? And religious systems are ways in which people answer the reason why. Now, there are other systems outside of a religious context where you also answer the, the question why. So I think the more you know about the history of religions and the differences among the various uh, faiths of the world, uh, the richer and more versatile you become in answering that question. But if one tradition says, we've got the answers, we've got all the meaning and everybody else is wrong, then uh, I, I'd be very wary of that. But to say that somebody is not religious would mean to me that they're not using religious language to answer the religious question, which is, so what's this all about? Well, you kind of say that uh, you'd be wary if someone said, we have all the answers, come to us. But isn't that what Christianity says? Isn't that what Christ says, I am the way mm -hmm. to the truth? This is a big issue because um, there are a lot of religious communities that say, we have the only answer to the questions as we frame them, and if you don't come to us, uh, you're damned. Now, if you actually played that out mathematically over history and said, well, everybody who was before Jesus is damned, everybody after Jesus who doesn't believe in a very narrowing uh, set of principles is damned, you get down to less than 1% or maybe just the Large three of us here. Of the population. You know, yeah, it, 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 it's absurd to say that 
for any one person or one tradition said we've got all the truth uh, God wouldn't waste Jesus on just those few people so so who is it and how big is the how big is the answer my sense is that I cannot tell anybody what truth there is in other world's religions Judaism and Buddhism and Islam I try to study and try to understand what the systems are what I can say is what I have in my own life discovered in the Christian uh, set of symbols of which Jesus Christ is the central one so I can say Jesus is the way I have discovered to understand the meaning that God has put into life and I can without apology testify to that over and over this is what Jesus means and this is how it works that does not mean to me that I now then disqualify everybody else sometimes I've discovered that when I'm in conversation with people of other religious faiths or no religious faith at all that I become a stronger believer because I'm tested I'm reconsidering things that maybe I just assumed uh, so yeah now that's a big big question where, where Christians divide in sense of uh, how exclusive how unique is the Christian message and uh, what does that mean for other people who stand outside that community I'm I'm much more in the right sense of the word agnostic in the sense of I can't tell you what I don't know for sure I'll only tell you what I do know in that case if you believe you believe that your way or the, the way of the Christian faith is a way for you Mm -hmm. is a truth for you then is that something you should spread to bring to other people of other religions or should you just let them be then I think you demonstrate how you live your life based on your your beliefs and that that in and of itself is the the result of one's faith so if Jesus says uh, you know feed the hungry and clothe the naked and visit those in prison as we have in Matthew 25 then you better be doing those things to make it obvious that those beliefs give results into how you live your life now if people from other traditions or no tradition see that and find that compelling then fine I think for me the the urgency of ministry here in the middle of the city right here in the on the plaza is not somehow that Christians have to uh, be triumphant over people of other religions but rather that Christianity has to be a viable way of living in a highly secularized world so my mission field is not people of other faiths primarily but people in general who are trying to find meaning who can't who, you know who, whose lives just don't seem to add up or they're not fulfilled you know they have a good job or no job as it might turn out but they're not doing anything that they say really gives meaning to their lives and so I've got plenty to do without worrying about uh, trying to move people from one tradition to another. So what is your faith to you then? Is it just a method of affirming what you believe your purpose to be? Or is it something that you want? I mean, you say that you're ministering mm -hmm. to like, people in general, people who are seeking some meaning. Mm -hmm. So is that what your faith is to you? A, a, uh, a search for meaning yeah yes it is and I, I think one of the one of the early commands in the, the life of the disciples when Jesus is out and about is uh, come and see it's an invitation to people to say come and see what this is all about come and see how this plays out in daily life come and see what meaning this brings and I think that's probably the most generous invitation that people of faith can make to others is you know come and see we're not going to give you and certainly from our own Methodist tradition we're not going to give you a kind of refined dogmatic list of things you have to sign on to before you can be faithful but rather in in our side of uh, Protestantism the big issue is how do you link personal faith with social responsibility <laughs>